If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who live in rural areas, deep woods, reservations, and other outdoor areas, what is the scariest unknown thing or cryptid, Wendigo, Mothman, Skinwalker, Rake, etc., you have encountered out there? My possible encounter with a Native American creature, a skinwalker last night, I was walking to my friend Moira's house. I was walking my dog, Beef, home. We walked down our usual street when suddenly all the street lights went out. That's not that uncommon, but something felt different. I felt a sudden dread. My heart sank and sped up at the same time. I got goosebumps, and I felt the sudden urge to cry. I would have brushed it off as paranoia, but Beef's tail went between his legs, and he stared at the pitch black forested area. Not looking away. I pulled him away and started fast walking, constantly looking behind me. Then I heard something that I'll never forget. I heard what sounded sort of like a human, but not. It said hello? 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 In the same exact pitch and tone. Over and over and over. I began to run to Moira's house with Beef, whose tail was still between his legs. We decided to walk back to my place in a longer, but safer way. I had goosebumps, and my hair stood on end the whole walk home. When coming back home after dropping her off, I smelled sulfur and booked it. Something was just not right. I do have a feeling about what it was. I would absolutely love to brush this off as me being paranoid and delusional, but the way Beef reacted solidifies the idea in my mind of what I encountered. I didn't want to mention the name of the creature because saying their name draws them closer. My grandfather was indigenous, and I grew up with stories about them, so I'm very, very frightened of them and always have been. The other night, while driving home from my mill's house, we were passing some open fields. Most of the time, while passing the fields, we try to spot animals. Deer, fox, raccoons, etc. But that night, I saw something that scared me so much that my brain went into what I can only describe as shock. It took a full minute or more for me to understand what I saw. My husband, seeing me dazed, kept asking me what was wrong. What had happened? I couldn't speak. I just looked at him. What I saw was. Well, it was a thing. Pale and long. Climbing up the ditch to the field. Its body was twisted and branch-like, but bone-looking. Its head was eyeless, but its mouth was wide open, like it was screaming. I heard no sound as the windows were up, but it was moving, crawling, and reaching. My husband wanted to go back and look for it, but I begged him not to. I didn't want to see it again, and the fear it put into me stayed in my mind like a steam stuck in your throat. I've tried to explain this creature to a few people, and the looks or comments are mainly rude or unbelievably rude, so I've come here for advice, or maybe someone else has seen it. While listening to music, I saw this weird, broken back, crawling pale thing, and when I turned on the lights, it wasn't there. There is nothing white or pale in my room, and it was super hard to see. After that, I keep seeing white or pale hands and arms reaching out to me when I'm not looking for them when I turn towards an area, and they always disappear after I see them. I know I'm not seeing things because they stay for a while before hiding again. Does anyone have an explanation for this, or does anyone know who this creature might be? It seems like a very feminine creature, no hair anywhere, pale, crawls, and looks like a human. Kind of like the rake, but healthier. It never hurt me or attempted to do anything, it seems like it mostly wants to just scare me. How do I make this creature go away? The pale man is my neighborhood boogeyman, or skinwalker. He has really insanely pale skin, elongated limbs, and walks on all fours so fast it can only be seen as a blur, but he also has no eyes, weird teeth, and a hunger for anything from small woodland creatures to human beings during a barbecue. I went hunting for it after the barbecue thing, and now no sightings have been reported. Some people even use it as a kind of boogeyman for kids, but I swear to God that it stares at me through my window at night, and now it seems to be more aggressive than ever because sightings have been picked up tremendously by the same exact people who first saw it. Any reasons why it would suddenly become active after a two-year resurgence? This happened to me and my best friend when we were about 11. We were taking her puppy out for a walk down to this park. It's in the middle of a massive field, so there's nothing surrounding it apart from grass. It was about 5.30 in November, so it was pitch black. We were on a flying fox, I was at the top, and she was at the bottom, bringing the swing back up because it was my turn. Then, all of a sudden, my friend's dog started acting weird. I shouted to my friend, her dog was being odd, and she started screaming and running. I did as well, and as we were running, I turned around to see a big white blob on the floor. We got to a main road, and I was so confused. I persisted in believing that she told me what the duck was on the floor, 
and she said there was a silhouette crawling along the floor. My first thought was that it was possibly a drunken man who had fallen over, but my friend described that this thing had very long arms and legs and was crawling not like a human, like something you'd see out of a scary movie. To this day, we don't know what it is, and we never go to that park at night. As a young teen, I just refused to sleep at normal hours, especially on weekends. Why? Well, that's because the house I lived in and the land the house was on were haunted as shit. Staying up usually meant seeing some freaky SHT and growing up in a small English town. Well, that's as exciting as life gets. So one night, when I was around 14, I was staying up and staring out my window when I started seeing glowing blue and purple lights coming from the forest behind my house, we don't have fireflies where I live, I don't think. I thought they were cool, so I just continued staring at them, trying to figure out what they were. Now, the way my house was set up, my bedroom window faced the forest and my back garden, and directly next to my room is a side gate that links to the front part of the house. On either side of the gates are motion sensor lights. So the lights in the forest may not have been paranormal, but what happened next most definitely was. The motion at the front of the gate triggers, casting a faint light into my garden. The night grows really silent, no more owls or crickets, and just really eerie. The lights in the forest continue to ebb and then just die out. I listen carefully as I start to cut the wood of the gate. It's muffled, so I slightly crack open my window to get a better look or listen. Now that gate is always locked, with a heavy-ass padlock at that. To this day, I have asked my dad if he ever left the gate unlocked that night, and he stands by the fact that unless he's gardening, the gate stays closed. This was spring, so he might have started seeding, so for my own comfort, I'm going to assume he left the gate open. Anyway, I hear the gate slowly swing open. The creaks of the wood were so loud against the silent night, so the sound was very distinctive. The motion light right underneath my bedroom window switches on. Honestly, to this day, I really can't explain what I saw. It had this off-white, veiny kind of skin texture and was about the size of a child. It walked on all fours and looked sickly. Its hind legs were significantly longer than its front legs, and it looked to have hand claws. I hate having to link back to creepypasta, but it honestly looked like the rake. Now that I've gone through the possibilities in my head, trust me. It was too small to be the deer that frequented our garden, and it also had no remotely deer-like features. A badger or fox with a disease is possible. However, I've never seen badgers or foxes with such long limbs and such disproportionate proportions. Also, this thing was completely hairless and human-like. The worst part about it for me was how it slowly and silently moved up my garden path before disappearing into the woods. The noises of the night started back up after that, but I was so shaken that I didn't sleep that entire night. I'm from England, so I haven't heard of any folklore that matches what I saw. I know there were occult practices done in the woods behind my house, but I'm pretty sure they were pagan, hence not inherently bad or demonic. I don't know what I saw, honestly. Any idea? I had a bad encounter with something I had never seen before. It was at least 15 feet tall and absolutely horrifying to look at. Me and a friend were just walking on my property in the middle of the night trying to track some deer that had been coming through when we came up on it, and holy SHT, I'll describe it the best I can. It was tall and fleshy, with the spine protruding through its back. It had a long neck and a human-like face with what seemed to be giant, pointed bone legs. I already know this sounds crazy and unreal, but this thing has messed me up on a whole other level. I had a strange experience last night and would appreciate it if anyone could help me understand it or happen to know what kind of fae or creature this is. My bedroom is on the second floor, and I have a deck outside my window. In the middle of the night, I woke up and looked out of my window and saw this creature with a large deer head but with the body of a medium-sized black dog with its back standing about two feet tall. It was staring at me while I slept. I did not get good vibes from this thing. There was also no way a dog or deer could get up on a second story enclosed deck. I vocalized to my partner, why is that deer staring at us through the window? As soon as I said that out loud, I realized my eyes were actually not open. My boyfriend dismissed this as just a bad dream, but it wasn't a dream. I really felt awake. I really thought my eyes were open because I could see my room exactly as it actually was. I was fully awake, and I was able to move and talk, so it couldn't be sleep paralysis. When my eyes shot open, the thing was gone. Can anyone identify this creature? Half deer, Half dog? Why do you think it was staring at me? Do I need to do anything to protect myself? So, I saw something not quite human, although I wasn't alone, my high school friend saw it too. We were driving to my house along a long, dark road, high beams on. As we turned onto the road and rolled along, 
I saw something crouched in the center of the road. I thought it was a very large kangaroo, I'm from Australia. I said to my friend, hey, look, it's a kanga. And then froze as we ground to a halt, the engine softly purring, about 10 to 15 feet away from it. My friend looked up, and I watched the color drain from her face, just like mine had already done. My hands were firmly on the steering wheel. She kept repeating, what is that? What is that? The creature was hunched over on all fours, naked, pale-skinned, bald, and thin, ribs were visible, it was at least six to seven feet. A big mouth with really strange, unsettling teeth. Like ape teeth, sharp and the faintest bit human. It just stared at us, perfectly framed in the headlights of my car. Its eyes were black and sunken into its head. The nose had just two holes. It was quite possibly the most terrifying thing I had ever seen. After about two to five minutes, I said, well, what? What do we do? I inched the car forward, I'd figured I'd rather keep it in our sights than turn around with our backs to it. So we rolled forward, and the creature walked, on all fours, to the side of the road, letting us by, but its face was fixed firmly on our car. Not just our car, but us inside of it. It just kind of let us go slightly around it. We got sideways, and it started moving quickly into the brush to the side of the road. The closest it came to us was about two to five feet. We raced home, screaming and frantic. We burst in the door and told my parents what we saw, and they didn't believe us. They thought we were stoned, but we hadn't had a single puff of a joint or a drop of beer. They said it must have been a kangaroo that got clipped. It wasn't. I remember it as clear as day. Today I was watching a show about mysteries on Netflix, and it all came flashing back. I still have that friend on Snapchat, but we grew apart and haven't seen each other in about 8-9 to nine years. But when I messaged her about what we saw, I was hoping she would say, um, no, that must have been a dream, but she didn't. She word for word recounted everything I saw, when she mentioned it was crouched in the middle of the road, I got a faint feeling of pins and needles and almost vomited. Please someone tell me they've seen something like this. The sighting was in McLaren Vale, South Australia, in 2012, around 8.30 to 9 p.m., and I will never forget it, and neither will my friend. Well, the only thing I've seen that defies explanation is what I saw the other night around midnight, taking my son to work. Anyway, as we went around a corner on a huge housing estate, my son, who's almost 40, jumped and said, what the hell was that? At that point, I never saw what he meant, but he had gone pure white with shock, I think, and kept saying, didn't you see it, ma? What the hell was it? I explained that I hadn't seen it and knew he was expecting me to explain it. He carried on to his work, and he was completely silent on the journey. A few nights later, I gave him another lift, as he was late. All was clear on the way there except for seeing plenty of urban foxes and badgers, but as I reached where my son said he had seen something, I slowed down, hoping for a glimpse of what he had seen that had affected him so much. Passing a parked car, I noticed movement, so I pulled over and parked. I wasn't disappointed. A minute or two passed, and this creature came into my sight. I kept very still and watched. It was a shock. Into my view came this creature slowly walking along the empty pavement. It was about the size and height as my West Highland Terrier. Maybe slightly taller. Pure black, it just looked like a lump of black fur. The face. Or what I could see if it was squashed into the body, seen no neck. Or even its legs. It moved as if it was a snail. Then it stopped and turned towards me in the car, thank God, the only way I could tell that it was looking at me were the eyes. Large red. Very red shining eyes. Self-illuminated and staring straight at me. I could see that no nose or even mouth was visible, just a lump of black fur with red eyes that moved as a snail would move. It slightly came towards my car. That was enough for me. My foot automatically hit the pedal, and I was gone. God only knows what it was, as I certainly don't. Has anyone else seen a creature like I've described? Even remotely? I can be honest in saying yes, it freaked me out too. I keep imagining it in my mind. I'm trying so hard to come up with an explanation, but so far, I haven't found one. The fur wasn't exceptionally long, so why couldn't I at least see legs? And there was no face except for the eyes. I was close enough to see it clearly, plus it was under a street lamp, so viewing it wasn't a problem at all. It was moving on, I presume. Its stomach. Like a snail. Still gives me the creeps just thinking about it. Anyone out there able to explain what we saw? It was the end of summer 2016, July or August. I drove to visit my brother in a couple towns over. It's about a 45 minute drive. After visiting, I was leaving and heading home. Halfway home on Route 6, a country road, it was just starting to get dark. And my headlights had turned on. 
I followed a left in the road, and when I came around to the straight stretch, I saw a bear running across the road. But it wasn't solid. I live in the country. I know what animals look like. I know what a bear looks like, we have an abundance of black bears in our area, but this bear wasn't solid, and it wasn't running like a bear should. It looked blocky, almost. I can't explain it. And as I saw this, I thought, man, that's so weird. It's like smoke in the shape of a bear. When it crossed the road, there was a hill, and when it got to the hill, it turned into smoke and disappeared. I swear, this is in my soul. This is what I really saw, and immediately everything felt wrong. I had goosebumps so bad that my hair on top of my head was standing up. Not 30 yards from this encounter, I was driving about 55 to 60 miles per hour, I saw a freshly killed animal in the road, and I swear it didn't look like it had been run over. It looked like something had grabbed it and ended its life. I know how stupid this sounds, but it's so true. I saw the bear disappear right before my eyes, and I truly believe it hunted that animal, and if it didn't hunt it, it went to investigate it. This was really a long time ago, when I was a kid. My mom put me and my brother to bed and went to her room, she was still awake, and light from her bedroom with a slightly open door was shining into the hallway, so it wasn't really dark since the hallway is short and small. The door of my room is right in front of my bed, and I was looking into the hallway while laying in my bed when suddenly this small black creature that kind of looks like a mix of a goblin and a devil passed in front of my door from the right side of the hallway, which was the side where my mom's room was located, towards the left side, which led to my brother's room and the bathroom. My first thought was that it was my imagination, but about three seconds later, my brother, whose room is next to mine, said, Mom, is that something that passed in the hallway? My mom came out of her room and freaked out. She searched the only place that the end of the hallway was leading to, which was the bathroom, and found nothing, no windows were opened either. I would say that the creature was around 60 to 70 centimeters tall, I'm not sure exactly, but since there was a light switch next to my door, I kind of measured in my mind with the help of that, it didn't have a tail, horns, or wings, its body was skinny or bony, and it was black. It also made no sound and was extremely fast, it happened in a second. I don't know how to explain it, but it was like when something is so fast, you don't actually see it physically moving, but rather you see it standing still in the fraction of a moment before it's gone. Since then, I have not seen this creature again, and I have no idea where it went. It's as if it disappeared into thin air. I have had some other paranormal experiences later in life, like getting bloody scratches in my sleep, but I found out that I move in my sleep, so it can be explained with that, but this, I'd, if my brother hadn't seen it. I would have said that it was my imagination, but since he saw it too, there was definitely something there, and I have no other explanation. So last night I was on my way to my boyfriend's house in the middle of nowhere. I have been living with him for a few months now and have never seen anything strange or out of the ordinary. As I was a few miles into his backcountry road, something that I could most relate to, looking like a really tall, skinny dog, was walking on the side of the road. I was going fast, so I didn't get an amazing look at it but what I could see was a black face with two flesh-colored holes where the eyes were supposed to be and a flesh-colored hole where the mouth should have been. I don't know about you guys, but when I almost hit an animal, I'm instantly stunned and feel bad, and I swerve, but it was like my body knew this thing was not normal. I didn't get that awe, I almost hit an animal feeling, but a feeling of what the duck was. My mouth was involuntarily dropped open by the pure shock. I didn't see the body, but only an outline of the face shape and two black hind legs that were very lanky. Has anybody else seen something like this? I worked the night shift, and two nights ago while driving to my job, out of the corner of my eye, I saw an alabaster-skinned, seven-eight-foot tall humanoid creature stepping over the curb and onto the grass. It appeared to be hunched over slightly with long gangly limbs and appeared nearly emaciated. Even with it as dark as it was, I could see it perfectly, like neither the light and glare of my headlights nor the darkness of night could touch it. I drove past it and was obviously confused, but what's still strange is that I can still perfectly remember the moment. My memory isn't always the best, but I can still clearly see it, its arms barely moving as its legs carried it forward, and its head looking perfectly ahead as it moved. I've seen and heard some weird things in the past, but this is both the most recent and strange. Has anyone seen anything similar? This occurred in southern Minnesota, if that helps at all. So me and my buddy, we'll call him Joe. We're walking one day to an abandoned house, and Joe had some old clothing that we tore and made look haunted. We put some mud on his face and did something like a prank paranormal video. But when we were done, we heard what sounded like nails on a chalkboard inside the house. We both just put it off as, oh, mice or something. We watched the video we made, 
and in the middle of the video, there was a scream we didn't hear when recording. After we heard it, my phone died, so we went to our truck to charge it. When we did, we tried to watch the video again, but it was gone. We left and came back about a week later with some gear to explore the house. We were just having a laugh until we found the actual chalkboard on it that read, stop, leave, do not play. We were kind of freaked out, but our curiosity got the better of us. We found a basement or cellar door outside. When we opened it, a rake-like creature ran at us. We slammed the door and ran. We looked back, and nothing was there in the cellar. We took out a flashlight and went down there. There was no other exit, so we figured it got out. After realizing that, we ran for the truck. When I got a call from an unknown number, it said, don't return. Now, me and him kind of joke about it, but I still wonder where the creature went. It is scary knowing something is out there roaming and doing who knows what. Last night, my roommate went down to take out the trash. We had a couple white claws, so my other roommate and I went to meet up with her so she wasn't alone. We couldn't find her near the trash cans, so we thought she may have gone on a walk since she has done that before. When we went outside, my roommate looked to the left and started to walk, but then she turned right and started running. I looked to the right, and I saw what I thought was my other roommate too. I started jogging in order to catch up with my roommate, who was running towards the figure in the distance. However, as I got closer, I realized it was not my roommate. It was tall, about 7 feet, its upper body was huge, and its legs were skinny. It was standing with its legs wide open and its knees bent. I screamed to my roommate next to me, that's not her. I don't even think that's human. My roommate kept running, and a couple seconds later she stopped in her tracks. Run and don't look back, she said to me. I started running back to the apartment, and I looked back, and the figure did not move its body, but somehow it got closer to us. My roommate grabbed my hand and told me not to slow down. We both looked back once more, and it had totally disappeared. We went down this morning to see if it could have been a tree or something, but nothing was there. Let me know if I'm crazy. So, today is July 5th. I went for a midnight drive last night or early this morning. I was born and raised in Alabama, where I now live. I live in the area of the infamous Hines Road, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly recommend googling it. Anyway, I normally go on drives to blast music and clear my thoughts when I'm having a stressful day. I was going up this one residential road that's only a short drive from me. It's on a mountain, so you have to go up and come down. Well, I was on my way, driving down the road and coming down the mountain around this curve. Now, along this curve, there's a stretch of woods on either side, and I don't know how deep they go, but it seems they run for at least 25 plus acres. When I was driving along this curve, a white figure appeared in the middle of the road, literally within a single blink of my eyes. It is unfazed by me, though. Its back is turned away from me, and it's walking towards the other side of the woods. It's solid white, with no features except that it has two legs and two long, lanky arms. Its head seemed like a normal size, but it had no hair and, again, no distinguishing features. It didn't seem to have ears. And again, it never turned to face me. I can vividly see it walking into the woods, but as I drove past it, looking to see what it was, it vanished as quickly as it had appeared. I have absolutely no idea what I saw, but I know it wasn't human. I am not writing this to create a creepy story, this 100% happened, and I am utterly confused and creeped out. What was it? If it wasn't human, what the hell did I witness? Why did it vanish into thin air? If you guys have any idea as to what this could have been, please respond. I need answers. I live in Montana, and my friend keeps seeing a big creature around his property, and he is determined to find out what it is. First encounter, June 28, 2021. Our first encounter happened a few days after we moved in. For insight, we moved in on June 25, 2021. At this point, I am still in crutches from the crash, so I am not doing much lifting. So while my family was unboxing things and whatnot, I would sit on the porch and read, but today I noticed something. While I was reading, I saw something off in the distance in the corner of my eye. I looked up and saw that about a hundred feet away from me at the edge of the forest was what appeared to be some kind of large, four-legged animal, and so I called my eldest son Norman, and he came out onto the porch and asked, What's wrong, Dad? What's up? I pointed to the animal, and a puzzled look came over my son's face. Why, Dad, that's the biggest dang wolf I've ever seen. Should I get the guns? No, no, I said, let's wait and see if it's anything. All right, he said as he walked back inside. Just holler if you need me. I kept my eyes on it as it crept around the tree line. It did that for a while until its head perked up and it ran into the woods. Later that day, 
I told my wife, but she said it was just a big grey wolf, even though I was adamant it wasn't. After that, we would see it in the distance often, and at night, we would see its glowing eyes, although they are usually much closer at night. One night, we even saw it peeking through the windows. That night, we scared it off with my shotgun. Another night, I found out it had gotten into the chicken coop, and it took three of them. Norman spent the rest of that day looking for it, and that was yesterday. I haven't seen it yet today. I live in the house of an animal shelter, as I'm the on-site vet and take care of most of the dog's medical needs. And we are a non-profit organization, so the majority of our money comes from adoptions. But we are also located out in the middle of the desert, with about 20 acres, give or take a couple acres. I started working here last month and I've had so many strange occurrences during my nighttime walkthroughs. Living on site means I room and board here, and typically you get rats and squirrels, small vermin who will poop and agitate the animals. But last night I was walking around with my flashlight and one of the dogs, who is very calm and chill. His name is Gizmo, and he sort of protects me as I've had a raccoon attack last week and had to get a couple shots and some stitching. He comes with me for protection, as he's a guard dog of sorts, a bull terrier. I was counting our dogs and double checking that everyone had gotten their meds and the cages were locked. I got to the back, where trucks can pull in, and went out onto the open lot to see what I assumed was a large dog. I think it was one of our big dogs that got out of his pen, so I approached, but Gizmo started growling, whimpering, and pulling back. I flashed my light, and the dog was hunched over still. I pulled Gizmo, and he wouldn't budge. I walk over to the kennel, where I thought the dog had escaped, but the foosball was in his pen. I flash the flashlight in the direction of the dog, thinking it's a stray, and see it standing on its hind legs. I don't think anything of it, but it's a big dog, and it'll tear Gizmo to pieces, so I release him from my waist leash, and he takes off back to the gate and sits there, whimpering and barking still. I turn back to look at the dog thing, werewolf? Skinwalker? And keep shining my light, get my phone out, and have 911 ready to dial. That thing stood tall on its two hind legs, and honestly, I was probably stupid to go closer. I got closer, but it started running away on its two hind legs, and it just sent chills down my spine. Gizmo came back to me and started pulling me away. As I closed and locked the fence, I felt like it was out there again, so I walked back quickly to my room and let Gizmo sleep with me. My boss told me it was my mind playing tricks, but I didn't tell her. Gizmo saw and felt the presence too. Two friends and I were riding four-wheelers at around 10 one night. We had been riding on an abandoned bus. We were at a large clearing where there were three pine trees close together in a triangle, probably about four feet apart, and we got the bright idea to build a fire in the middle. One of my friends doesn't believe in paranormal stuff, so he kept whistling to mess with us. My other friend, whom we'll call S, and I kept hearing some sort of scream after the other friend, whom we will call K, would whistle. He whistled about 15 times, and there was a high-pitched scream or screech after every one. He finally got scared so we decided to leave. On the way back to the main road, there is about a three-quarters mile long stretch of nothing but tall grass, about four feet, on both sides of the road. You can see nothing past the tall grass. There was a tall, solid white figure that stood above the grass, about seven feet. There were no limbs, no eyes, nothing. It just hovered beside us all for about ten seconds. I'd love to know what this figure may have been. I'm fairly sure that was the last time I was up there after dark. It was terrifying. About two years ago, my best friend and I went to ski slash board Mount Hood in August since skiing slash boarding is our favorite thing to do. It's a semi-ritual to go to Hood in the summer before our season starts here in Idaho, but that year we went, and my buddy finally started believing in the paranormal. We pulled up to our Airbnb without seeing a soul other than a little girl playing volleyball against a wall by herself, this was a well-known golf course community in their peak season. Upon opening the door to the condo, Jacob, my friend, and I immediately were overcome with a sick feeling of something being way off. As we entered, we saw that furniture and cleaning supplies were strewn across the condo. I immediately pulled my gun from my backpack, thinking we were going to find a dead body and the murderer with it. Searching the condo, we found comforters stuffed into the top shelves of closets, dining chairs stacked on top of counters, beds flipped up against walls, couches on their sides, and ottomans stacked on top of the couches. TVs were untouched, nothing appeared missing. We immediately got a refund and headed to the resort down the road, feeling watched the whole time. That night, after a point of molly and smoking some weed, we decided to walk the golf course around midnight. After our earlier incident, I decided to put my gun on my waist rather than in my backpack. As we walked around the course, 
staring up at the stars and wondering if we were going to see a UFO on top of our weird experience. Our buddy called us, saying he was almost to the resort, he'd had to work a full day and we hadn't, so we decided to head back. Maybe 50 yards after we hung up the phone, stumbling along in the dark, Jacob goes, what the duck is that? As soon as I looked to where his head had turned, I saw a figure moving with the quickness and strike of a rabbit from my right to my left, approximately 20 yards in front of me. Except it was the size and shape of a deer, and its head was completely up eyed down, starting straight at us. As soon as I saw this ducking thing, I instantly drew my gun, and of course, it instantly reacted. Instead of continuing its course, the only time it took its eyes off of us was to turn around and take a very predatory step towards us as if to say don't duck with me, bro, before it sped off into the dark in the complete opposite direction with its folded, ducking neck and its eyes stare straight back at us. The next day, we looked to see where we had seen whatever the hell it was, only to realize we were 100 yards from that nightmare Airbnb. One time I was hanging out with my friend, and I had too many edibles. I initially thought this experience was just from being extremely high, but what my friend told me later makes me question if I really saw another realm. After eating a brownie his friend made, it took a while to kick in, but when it did, it really kicked in. Now, I've been stoned to the point of not moving for hours, and it started out like that. Soon after that, I started seeing shadow figures, though. First, my friend was replaced by a demon-looking figure with a bunch of sharp teeth. I wasn't looking at him, but I felt that was what was there, and I had to talk to him to confirm he was still there. After that, I slept for a while. Later, I woke up when my friend told me he was going to go get us food. He wasn't high anymore, as this was many hours later, and he was more used to edibles than I was. As I was lying there before he got back, I felt more than I saw the flying shadow figures. They were like very large bats with sharp teeth flying around the room. I got the understanding that they were always there in this other world parallel to ours. They wanted to hurt us but couldn't get to us. My friend came back with food, and I got up, ate, and went to bed. That was the last of the shadow figures I saw. I figured I was just too high. I assumed there wasn't anything in the brownie other than weed because I trusted my friend, and he was just fine. I didn't tell him about any of what I saw for a long time because it really stuck with me and scared me. When I finally told him, he admitted that the demon figure I saw him turn into had been around him for a lot of his life, and he regularly sees that shadow figure. He also had all kinds of stories about the shadow figures he had seen throughout his life. Back when I was around 11, my third oldest brother was at his 8th grade graduation, and I was left home alone. For some context, I'm Canadian and, at the time, lived with my mother in an area surrounded by forest. So back to what the title hints at, I was home alone, and around maybe 5 p.m. I went out to put our chickens away. All of my roosters were on high alert, which wasn't strange except that a few wouldn't let me leave the coop, which isn't normal. I had around three roosters blocking the door, so after maybe 15 minutes of struggling, I had gotten out. I locked the door, and as I was heading inside, I heard branches and sticks cracking as if someone were stepping on them. At first, I thought it was the man who was stalking my family. After hearing this, I bolted inside and slammed my front door shut, locking it. I never got three steps from my door before I heard knocking and my mother's voice begging me to open the door because she forgot something. I knew it wasn't her as I watched her leave with my younger siblings and stepfather. In a panic and tears, I went upstairs and crawled to my room, closing the door and locking my door that led to the outside. The pounding and begging continued for a few more minutes as I covered my windows with some spare blankets. After a little bit, I began to hear tapping and knocking on my top window, which was pretty high up. I started hearing the voice mimic some family members' voices, saying stuff like, open the door or you're effing grounded, and open the damn door, and screaming. I didn't know what to do, but my 11-year-old mind decided on screaming and pleading for it to leave me alone, which wasn't smart as it led to it getting louder. After maybe 40 minutes, it stopped, and I thought it was over, but my generator shut off even though it was full. Shaken up, I knew I had to go outside to check on it, so I grabbed a metal baseball bat we had by the door and went outside. Shaking and crying, I checked it, and it showed that there was no fuel. I heard some weird sounds, and out of panic, I grabbed my cat, put him in my bag, and tried to bike off, but failed and ran back home crying since I was scared. My mother ended up coming home after an hour or two, and my stepdad dealt with the generator while my mother scolded me for being stupid. It was pretty windy, so I made up an excuse, saying I thought a tornado was coming, which she believed and called me dumb. After that, they left again, and I watched the truck drive off as I felt eyes on me. Quickly scooping up my cat, I went inside, locking the door, and it started again, 
the pounding and mimicking. I sat in bed crying, scared and confused about why it was happening. One of my makeshift curtains fell after a while. It had gotten dark out, being around maybe 8 or 9 now, and I could see a shadow of the being due to the moon. It was tall and had these deer-like antlers. I don't know how I knew I saw the shadow, but its hand started coming towards the corner of the wall, and I quickly covered my window. The tapping got worse, and the voices were changing again. I don't know whose voice it was using now, but I was scared. I ended up crying myself to sleep while my cat tried to comfort me, and it stopped. My mother came home, and that was kind of the end. I was shaken up for a few days and was very jumpy. I'm still scared of the forest to this day. I'm almost 17 now. I ended up confessing to my mother today about all of this, and she said it sounded demonic. She was going to talk to my stepfather about it, as he is native and may know. I grew up in Fayetteville and moved away in 1999. Right by Max Abbott Middle School, there are apartments called Winding Creek Apartments. If you follow Winding Creek Road down until it dead ends, next to the pool, there is or was a trail that takes you into some woods. My friends and I knew those woods very well, as I grew up in the apartments from 13 to 17 years old. We used to cut through that trail a lot to get to one of our other friends' houses in the other neighborhood. We never went that deep into the woods at night, especially not by ourselves. My friends all had their own creepy stories of their own hearing and seeing things, but this was mine. One fall afternoon, the trees were probably 3-4 THS barren of leaves. It was getting dark, but there was still a good amount of light, so I felt fine going home by myself through the trail. As I was about 5 minutes into the woods, that feeling of being watched became very palpable. I was very used to the noises of the woods but distinctly heard what sounded like footsteps through the brush of the thick woods, about 30 yards or so. The area was very vine and overgrown, nearly impossible to walk through without a machete or something. I obviously started to pick up the pace and began walking fast, going over the rocky, rooty terrain. About 2-3 to three minutes later, I heard the footsteps again. I stopped and looked around to try to see if it was a deer or something. And at that moment, I saw a silhouette of a person peeking around the side of a tree. I say silhouette because it looked like a predator when it was invisible but dark and shadowy around its center. I never saw anything else like it or anything like it on TV. After my brain clicked back on, needless to say, I made a full-on dash towards my neighborhood. I looked back to the side and back of me where I first saw it, but closer towards me, but still about 20 to 30 yards away, keeping parallel with the trail, I saw it running. Its whole body seemed to be sort of striding through the thick brush, like how someone runs in knee-high water at the beach. Fast, but still slowly. And I heard it too. I heard the strides of its feet hit the ground, but no leaves or brush moved or kicked up. It was the first and only time I truly felt hunted in my life. Yelling obscenities under my breath, I booked it the rest of the way, not stopping or spending more than a glance over my shoulder to see where it was, as all the horror movies from my teen years taught me how to do. I didn't stop until I got to the street in my neighborhood. I turned around to catch my breath on the road, about 40 yards away from the trailhead. And the only way I can describe it is that the entire tree line was darker than it should have been. I didn't see anything, but I got the feeling that all of the trees were eerily laughing at me, it took a little while, but I eventually started going back to the woods, but always with at least another person and never at night. So last summer, me and my dad, his girlfriend, her kids, and me went up to Ohio to see my dad's girlfriend's family. At times in Ohio, when I had nothing to do, I would go outside to call my friends and entertain myself. Ask them about how their life was, me telling them how things in Ohio were. When I was in Ohio, we stayed the night at my dad's girlfriend's uncle's house. They had a decent amount of land on their property, and behind the property was a fairly large forest. So when I would call my friend, I would walk around the field outside while talking to them. I would always call my friend around the field, and I would do this anywhere from 7pm to 9pm the reason I would go outside so late just to talk to my friend was because the walls were thin and I didn't exactly want my family to hear my conversations. So one of these nights I was calling my friend outside, like usual. We talk for a few hours and eventually somehow get into the conversation of skinwalkers. My friend just kind of started talking about how much they terrified them. And I start talking about them too. It is at this point that my friend points out the mistake I have made. That apparently you aren't supposed to mention skinwalkers out loud. And they joke about how it's especially not a good idea because it is 9 o'clock at night and I'm right by a forest. I SHT you. Not 10 minutes later, I hear something from the forest. A weird laugh or scream that sounds like a combination of a coyote, a laugh, a wolf, and a woman screaming for her life. This noise happened several times, 
followed immediately by what sounds like a man screaming from the forest as well. Yelling something along the lines of hey, come here. Now I know this could easily be explained by something rational, but I find it hard to believe that it's all just a coincidence. So after I hear all that go down, I tell my friend what happened and tell them that I'm going back inside and noping right the duck out of there. So I go inside and make my way to the basement storage area because that's the place where my parents have the least chance of hearing me. Because I still don't want them to hear me, especially if I'm talking about things like skinwalkers. They would probably think I was crazy. After a while of me and my friend talking over the phone down the stairs, I start to get this weird feeling of dread wash over me, like, really bad, so bad that I decide to go back upstairs. When I get back upstairs, for some reason, the feeling subsides. At that point, I don't care if my parents hear me or not, but because I was creeped the duck out. Me and said friend began talking again for a while before we finally hung up, so we couldn't both go to bed. But I had trouble sleeping that night. In 2013, I moved with my family to a foreclosed six-bedroom home on 14 acres straight up in the middle of nowhere in the Poconos. My father and I noticed very weird things going on the second we moved in, but my mother and sister seemed to not notice these things. Everyone besides me and my dad and my entire family is the O, oh, it was the wind type of person. There is some evidence that the entire area where this house is located is haunted, as in ghosts, Native American burial grounds, and other things. Now, historically speaking, with actual evidence, people settled here around the old mill area long ago and brutally killed many Iroquois Indians. This area is very spread out over miles of heavily wooded mountains. Two weeks ago, my uncle on my mother's side and his girlfriend came to visit my parents at home. They do this quite often, as my parents always have people over for beer, games, bonfires, etc. I just want to start off by saying my uncle is a non-believer, a Harley rider who, to this day, I have never seen really scared of anything or anyone before this sighting. My uncle and his girlfriend are playing foosball with my parents when they realize it is 12.30 am, so they decide to head home. They take all back roads, and once they turn onto running Valley Road, six minutes from the house, my uncle's girlfriend sees two figures, they were pretty far away at this point, but they are two small figures waiting to cross the road. Just to mention, there was nothing out here. There are no houses, besides one abandoned one that was still two miles up the road. The only thing in the vicinity is a cave. These figures were attempting to cross the road to go into the woods, which was very odd because of the time and location. They are now approaching these figures, headlights start to shine directly on them. Both my uncle and his girlfriend see two young girls aged 9 to 11. One is much bigger than the other. Wearing what my uncle best describes as early 1900s church clothing. Like dresses to the knee, with white cotton shawls or crop sweaters, and flats. Weird right? What are two 10-year-olds doing at 12.30 a.m. in the middle of nowhere wearing church clothing? They also notice the bigger child had her arms wrapped around the smaller one. Like you would if she was hurt, scared, or cold? At this point, my uncle's girlfriend is like, it's children, we need to stop and help. Now, at this point, the truck is almost right next to the little girls. Both had their heads held down. So then the bigger of the two starts to pick her head up to look at the passing vehicle. Then both my uncle and his girlfriend notice the girl had no eyes. Just black holes, as if they were carved straight from her face. GF says, WTF was that? You saw that, right? Um, turn around and go back right now. My uncle, scared shless, takes off flying to get home. They get home and get into an argument because she wants to drive back and see what was up. She grabbed her own car keys, and my uncle basically was like, you are not going back there, we are never going on that road again. He calls my parents in an extreme panic and tells them, and they start bugging because they know he would never lie or be that freaked out if it wasn't warranted. So my mom starts to tell me everything, mind you, my family knows nothing about black-eyed kids, I never heard of it before. I sent my mom an article to forward to my uncle with some of the very basic information, young kids, no eyes, dreadful feeling, sometimes outdated clothing, hitchhiking or at your door, looking for help, etc. Please let me know what y'all think. Or let me know if you experienced something similar to this. 1. About 5 years ago, when I was 10, I had just moved into a new house. Me and my older brother, 11, had gone into the woods in our backyard, we had found a downed tree and planned to make it a fort and we continued on to explore more of the woods. About two hours later, we heard a loud screech, followed by my younger sister's screams. Me and my older brother booked it down the hill back to where the screaming came from, only to find no one there. We decided to go inside our house to find our little sister, who was pale white and looked as scared as ever. She tells us she saw a lady in a big, 
long black wedding dress hanging from a tree, holding a little girl's hand, right next to the fallen tree fort. My sister also said that it had asked her if she wanted to play with them, and when she denied it, it let out a screech, the same one we heard from the woods. After that, my older sister found out and told us that in the woods was something called the rake, aka a skinwalker, she had seen a few years ago. 2. So, like I said, my sister had mentioned something about the rake aka ski walker, in our backyard. Like I said, we just moved there, but my sister's friend was our next door neighbor, so she had been there before. While they used to hang out, they would go in the woods, my sister has always been tomboyish and later that year came out as lesbian. They went into the woods one night and started to explore when my sister heard a loud screeching sound further up and went up to see what it might be. Out of nowhere, a pale white, seven foot tall creature with backward facing knees ran past her. Both she and her friend ran and never went into those woods again. My mother, a few years later, had heard the same screech. One day, I was hunting alone in the woods. It was snowing as always. I was looking for elk or deer. I went to a snowy area and buried myself in snow to cover my scent. A few hours pass, and I see nothing, but I have a feeling I'm not alone. As I look around, I see something dart into a pine tree, something big. Well, better look, I think to myself. I move my rifle scope to the tree and scan the area. I see something emerge, and I adjust my aim. I see the fur and pull the trigger, but instead of seeing it drop, I hear a horrible scream that booms through the woods. I jump at the sound, and then, as if it were filled with rage, the thing standing on two legs runs towards me. It's on two legs, and I start running towards my house. I run to the deck and aim at the cryptid thing, pulling the trigger once more. I manage to wound it enough to where it starts off into the woods. As I shoot another bullet into it, I see it look back at me. It has a pale face, white eyes, and almost daggers like needles for teeth. This event happened on January 3, 2016 to the north of Fort Bennett, Alaska. The legends there refer to a Wendigo, a Native American legend. I will never return to that clearing again. In 2018, I was 18 and was told by MEPS that I would be going to infantry school in Fort Benning, Georgia, in 2019. I was told by my parents to walk the family dog. He's an 80-pound purebreed chocolate lab named Coco. I decided to go to the same area I usually go to, as I haven't seen anything different. My roommate was there when I found the first sign of evidence. We traveled to one of the ponds that was on the course, and I found a weird set of tracks. It was the large bird tracks that then showed it slowly morphed into dog or coyote tracks. I asked my roommate about it, and he didn't know. I only had a small amount of data about this, but it matched up with a skinwalker. The tracks changing in the snow to a different animal was the first sign, and I didn't want to stick around and find a 150-pound coyote around. We headed back to my house, and we didn't speak of this again. The following day, I went out to the same place, but this time I saw something in the distance. It looked human from the start, but as I got closer, I knew what it was. I watched it slowly turn into a wolf. I didn't want to make any sudden movements. The dog was scared shless, And lying helplessly next to me. I waited till it went away, but it didn't. It's like he knew I was there. About 10 minutes passed, and he headed to the wood patch that was across the street. I decided to take advantage of the opportunity to run home. I never saw him again. I still go to that patch of wood. I went there in 2019 with my fiancé and family dog and saw nothing. It's weird, as when I'm there alone, I find things, but when I'm accompanied, I don't. If I had any advice, I'd say to never travel in the woods or any place that has a lot of trees and places to hide alone. And if you do travel alone, then bring something to defend yourself with. Stay safe. So for some context, I live in West Michigan, and we have this cryptid called the Michigan Dog Man. It is said to be a Wendigo in the shape of a humanoid dog creature, a black werewolf with matted fur and floppy ears, and a floppy dog face that haunts West Michigan. It became a running gag, when I'd talk to tourist customers at work, I'd always scare them with the dog man story. One day my teacher talked to my sister, who said he saw the dog man. He and his dad were camping in 1997. He and his dad went to get firewood. As they went off into the woods, they saw it standing on two legs, watching them silently. It went away soon after it saw them, he hasn't gone camping since. So this happened to me on July 4, 2007. Me and several of my friends and family watched the fireworks that night without incident, until the very end. It was after the show was over that we decided to wait at our spot in the grass for the traffic to die down. After a very short time of waiting, my boyfriend points up to the sky and says, Hey, what's that? I looked up, and at first I didn't see anything 
but I slowly began to notice the shape of something flying about 100 feet or so above us. I called out to my mom, and soon we were all staring at this thing. Its body looked odd, like part human, part gargoyle, or something. It had its legs tucked up by its belly, almost like a bird would. It was huge. But that's not what got our attention the most. It was its wing. They looked very similar to pterodactyl wings, very thin but strong. And they were at least 15 to 20 feet across. This is just a guess, as it was dark and the creature was very high up. They could have been much larger, for all I know. We watched as it very slowly flew past us and towards the woods across from us. Eventually we headed home, and I could not get the thing out of my head. My mom lives in the middle of nowhere, there are no houses around for miles except hers. I was terrified of it landing on the roof or, worse, looking in the windows. Luckily, none of that happened, and for a while I didn't tell anybody about it for very obvious reasons. I mean, who is going to believe you saw something you believe might have been Mothman? But one drunken night, I finally admitted it to this guy who was staying with my boyfriend and me at the time. As I'm telling him the story, he cuts me off. He described this monster exactly and even said the direction it was flying in. I guess he had been watching the thing at the same time. I was so happy to have validation, but at the same time terrified as I started to come to the realization that there is some sort of flying monster out there, and most people, unless they themselves witnessed it, believe it's a myth. If anybody else was in Toledo, Ohio, in 2007 during the 4th of July and saw this thing, please let me know. Or if you have seen it in other places. I am becoming obsessed with finding the truth, and for that reason, I left out a very important detail about this monster that only people who have truly seen it would know. That way, I can weed out the trolls. So a few years ago, I was camping with some of my buddies in a camp on the Ohio-Indiana border, not sure if that matters. We have been to that camp several times before, and it was a pretty nice camp. Anyway, it was the middle of the night and storming, and I had to get up to go to the restroom. Our campsite was situated near a lake, and there was a clearing in the tree so you could look out on the lake. So anyway, on my way back from the latrine, I noticed something on the other side of the lake. Something I had never seen before. It was like a light, or eyes is the only word I could use to describe it, I guess, two of them. Now this lake is probably about 150 feet, or maybe 200 feet, long, wide, or whatever, and the eyes were in the tree line, but they were small, like how a star looks at night in the sky. Anyway, I stood there looking at them for about 10 minutes before I decided that maybe I was just seeing things and should get back to sleep. So as I turned around to go back to my tent, the night lit up with a huge lightning bolt and very loud thunder. I turned back towards where they were, and they were gone. I have thought about that night ever since. Whether I was just tired and imagining things or if there was really something there, I suppose I should note that in the shower house there is a poster talking about an old Indian tale of a creature that resembled a giant owl or bird, with a wingspan of 9 feet, and would target campers at night. That's the best I can remember of the poster, as it was several years ago and they have taken it down since. And I was unable to find anything on the internet about it. So I am from Alexandria, Kentucky, and I saw something last night that I couldn't entirely explain. Last night was midnight madness for our school. It's basically some stupid football event during the summer, but everyone goes to see people they haven't seen over the summer. I went with my two friends and one of their girlfriends. We got there around 10.45. Me and my friends were getting pretty bored of the event, and my one friend had just bought dabs. For those who don't know, dabs are like a concentrated form of weed. We got in my buddy's car and were looking for a place to smoke. We were driving around this subdivision that had very thick forests all around it. We settled on this abandoned house and decided to smoke in the woods behind it. My friend was setting up his rig, and we realized we had forgotten the water for the dab rig. A dab rig is basically a bong for dabs, and it needs water or else it will be very harsh to smoke. Well, we had parked a little bit down the street, so no one would be suspicious. Nobody wanted to go back to the car because it was a 5 minute walk back to the car. So I decided to go back for the water. While I was walking back, I heard scratching from behind a nearby house. It kind of freaked me out, but I thought it must have been a dog or an animal. I made it to the car, got the water, and started heading back. As I was walking by the house, I heard the scratching. I began to hear it again, but then I heard what sounded like a footstep kicking up gravel when someone starts trying to run. I turn and see something that has kept me up all night. Now keep in mind that I am a 6 foot 2 17 year old guy, so I am bigger than most things. And this thing that I saw had me easily beat in height by 2 to 3 feet. It was slender, but with long, almost stretched out limbs. I couldn't really make out any more details because it was pretty dark. The creature was running from one backyard to another. I never saw its face, 
only its body. It ran on two feet, but it was faster than any person I have ever seen run. Hell, it was faster than anything I've ever seen run. The creature made it from one backyard to the next, about 50 to 90 feet, in about 3 to 5 seconds. I was standing in the middle of the street, about 30 feet away. I stood there for a second, in complete shock. Then I ran as fast as I could to my friends. I ran through thorns and bushes to make it back to them. I ran and told them what I saw. I'm not too sure if they believed me, but the panic in my voice was enough for them to know I had seen something. We all packed up our rig and went back to the car. I have been up all night trying to find out what I saw. The two closet things I have seen on the internet are something called the Dover Demon and something called the Wood Devil. I never saw its face, so I'm not too sure what it was. If anyone can help me explain what I saw or has had a similar experience, please let me know. And please also know that I was 100% sober when I saw the creature. My grandma recently passed, and I wanted to share a story she used to tell. In the late 1960s, before having my dad, I had my uncle for about five years. She lived close to the tribe in Carnegie but still lived closer to Medicine Park. Usually she would go to Carnegie during the week for groceries as she worked nights at her job during the weekend, but on the odd occasion, she'd go to Medicine Park to get whatever groceries we needed that weekend that she either forgot or didn't get enough of. The reason she did it was because there were no stores in Carnegie that were open late at night, but there was one in Medicine Park. She then told us that the mountain we drove around was sacred to the tribe, and we were promised that no road would be built there by the government in the 1900s, but of course they built some there anyway, so when driving, you can get a good view of the mountain and the lake. Because of this, it is now haunted by a spirit that's aggressive if you drive at night. Now, a lot of people can agree that native creatures and supernatural stories were just made up, but this was the first real event that made her believe more than what she thought was real regarding native ghost stories. This particular night, the clouds covered the moon and stars, so it was darker than usual. It didn't bother her as much as she could still see the road and say, I'll be damned if I'm wasting gas on Carnegie, but around halfway through the trip, her car stopped. Just turn off by itself, she thought it was weird, but probably just something wrong with the car. She went to turn it on, but nothing happened. So she tried a second time. Immediately after attempting to start it a second time, she said she heard something whoosh above the car. Then she started it a third time, and it worked. But in the span of about four seconds, she said she saw a large black figure in the middle of the road, not six feet away from the car. When she noticed, she said it reacted to the lights shining as it quickly turned its head and showed its big, glowing eyes. It then flew up into the air, never to be seen again. She just called it the owl, but me and my brother like the name Owl Man better, which is kind of a joke as we're obsessed with silly cryptids like Frog Man. But the reason she claims this was a significant encounter was because owls in our tribe are taboo and are said to be bad omens. If you see one, it means someone close to you is going to die very soon. And about a year later, when my dad was less than a year old, they found out my grandpa had cancer. It would be a little over a decade before he died from it, but the owl and the bad news were not coincidental. Now, do I believe it? Yes, I do. My grandma was dead set on it being a true story, and my dad believes it's too, probably because he also had stories of paranormal stuff happening to him. He said it himself, there are things out there you can't even imagine. So this isn't actually my story but my grandparents, and it would have occurred in the 1970s. My grandparents were hanging out with some friends on the other side of town until they decided it was time to leave, as it was so late and they had to relieve the babysitter from caring for their kids. Hopping in the car, they set out for home. They live in the countryside, so they were driving down quiet, narrow roads through large fields, as they usually would to get home, both silent and tired. As my grandmother nodded off, staring out the window, she noticed something large and unusual moving in the middle of one of the otherwise empty fields. Curious, she asked my grandfather to slow right down so she could get a better look at it, asking him what he thought it was. My grandfather, a hunter, was too intrigued since, from what he saw from his angle, it was about as big as a bear, but it didn't make sense as to why a bear would be out in the middle of this empty field. They both stopped, staring at the moving mass in the distance. Suddenly, they were stunned as the creature stood to reveal the figure of an abnormally large and muscular man or ape, both very strange given one, how late it was, two, the fact that there are no known species of ape in their area, much less in America, and three, there were no buildings particularly nearby. After a few minutes of gawking as the creature stood motionless in the distance, they agreed that they should continue home, find the owner of the land, and tell them about this possible trespasser in the morning. Slowly, my grandfather began to drive, though he and my grandmother were still unable to look away from the unusual being. 
To their surprise, it began to run parallel to the vehicle in the distance, revealing that it did indeed run in the fashion of a gorilla or other large ape. My grandfather then accelerated. The creature kept pace, remaining in line with them. It was reaching a speed of 30 miles per hour. Stunned, they tested their beast, beginning to reverse. Again, it followed, too, going back the way it came. Now rather fascinated and amused, they continued to accelerate and reverse as it, still parallel and in the distance, mirrored their actions. This continued for a few minutes before the two once again stopped the car, laughing and theorizing about this new discovery. It stood still. Their laughter was suddenly interrupted as the creature came charging at high speed straight for them, as though intending to do damage. Now frightened, my grandfather sped off, leaving it far behind them. That was the only and last time either of them had seen a beast like that. The following morning, my grandfather did as he had said he would and went to the owner of the land to notify them of his sighting the night before. The landowner had no idea as to what it could possibly mean, but thanked him for the heads up and said he would keep his eyes open for any possible trespassers in the future. What could it have been? When I was little, I was staying at my grandma's house every summer, and at the age of four or five, I started seeing things, but not something wow, just little glowing things, and then they randomly disappeared, and I could hear voices like they were in a place with echo. I didn't give them too much attention, but then he appeared, and it freaked me out. It was night, I know it was past 00, and I was in my grandma's room watching TV with her because I didn't have one in my room. There are three houses in the same yard, all ours. The fridge was in another house, so I went to grab an ice cream, but I froze just before I entered that house because I heard something breathe. My dogs were not there, they were with my other grandma, my mom's mother. I started crying instantly, and I looked to the right side to see what it was. He was just staring at me with a big smile, showing his teeth and those yellow eyes. He was much taller than me. He didn't harm me, after a few seconds, he just started to walk in the backyard, and I couldn't see him anymore because it was too dark. I forgot about the ice cream and ran inside the house. I've told my parents, but they didn't believe me. I told my grandma that night too, and she just stared at me in shock and then told me to go to sleep. After this encounter, I started seeing him, but in real life, not as many times as I see him in my dreams. If someone can tell me what this thing is, or if someone has encountered him too, please tell me anything you know because it's getting on my nerves. Then here are the growls. Where my grandma lives, there are rumors about ghosts, a witch, and something like a big black dog. I mentioned nobody will go out of their houses after oh oh because of these rumors. At the age of 13, I was at my grandma's house with my cousin playing don't get angry, brother. And he had the brilliant idea to go out on the empty street just because he was ready to show me the rumors were fake. Like a stupid kid, I went with him, and we took a walk. We were on the street for a while, but we were also tired, so we decided to go back, and he was just laughing at me because I was scared of those, obviously, fake rumors who are meant to keep us inside and be good ids. On our way back, we saw the dog. My cousin thought he was a wolf, but I started shaking because I sensed something bad, and I was thinking, wolves go in packs, right? That's what my teacher told us, so why was this one alone? We froze when he turned to us. It was just so big, and his eyes were black. We stood there for a few minutes, but they seemed like hours. He was just staring at us, and we were staring back, and I was ready to run if he would move towards us. Then he just vanished, he did not walk in another direction, did not run, just vanished while he stared at us. But not like he was getting invisible, he was just darker, like he was fading, and we couldn't see him anymore. We got back to my grandma, and we told him, and then she told us a story about my grandpa. He encountered the dog too, but he was in his car, and the dog just appeared out of nowhere and started running after him, but my grandma told us he said the dog was running awkwardly, like a kind of human, but yes, he had four legs. When grandpa was near the house, the dog just vanished. My problem here is that after I saw him, I started hearing random growls when there were no dogs near me, even in my house or at my boyfriend's house. I hear them two or three times per year, and if my boyfriend is around, he's hearing them too. Those growls sound like a pack of big dogs who are growling at the same time, but they sound so intense. So I live in a rural area that in the past used to be farmland, but since it has been reclaimed by the forest, there is very dense undergrowth such as thorns and vines and a lot of stuff to trip over. Anyway, there's a trail that I walk every day multiple times, as I like to smoke back there. This trail is the only clear path through the woods, it leads in for about 150 feet and then stops at a dead end. This was my favorite spot, and I still walk it today and have for 4 years. I usually wake up and go straight to my trail before I'm even fully awake. So one day last summer, it's 11am because, typical teenager, 
I'm half awake and walking the trail. I'm almost at the end when I hear the underbrush rustling with the sound of something bipedal moving fast, so naturally, I'm like, what the hell, and I'm looking for the source of the sound when I see, about 20 feet away from me, past the end of the trail, a large black figure taking off away from me. Now I stand an even 6 feet tall, and whatever this was was probably just as tall or taller than me. Once I realized what was going on, I took off, running back to my house. Now I realize that it was most likely a person who got caught where they weren't supposed to be, but it's fun to think that I could have encountered a Bigfoot in my own backyard, and ever since this happened, I've always been paranoid that someone or something was watching me in those woods. It makes me extremely hyper aware, and I feel like those woods aren't mine anymore. When I was about 22 and working for a small, small security company of only 18 people at the time, we worked at an area tourism location called Seven Falls in southwest Colorado Springs, in the Cheyenne Mountain Canyon area. I remember the shifts being grueling, due mostly to the fact that we were mostly in direct sunlight during the afternoon and evening, and during an average shift, we were expected to walk a minimum of seven miles between the base of the parking area and the top of the falls. We were rarely allowed to use the guest elevator for the handicapped and elderly. The whole park was on a hilly incline, so walking the top down was okay, walking the bottom up is what exhausted us. In the evening near the base of the falls, native Ute and or Cheyenne tribal dancers would perform, and we had to monitor crowds, which had slight breaks for about 15 to 20 minutes. These falls were frequented by area tribes for hundreds of years and were still considered spiritual, so it was the native tribes that pushed for their performances since Seven Falls is considering a state park. At the end of the night, we would sit at the main entrance into the falls at the bottom of the canyon off Lower Gold Camp Road and monitor the toll booth until roughly 1 a.m., except during weekends and holidays, when we were out there till 3 in the morning. On several occasions, when waiting for the end of my shifts, I always had occurrences that made me feel like I was going to get attacked by either an animal or a person. Guttural hissing, deep maniche groans, and harassing growls could always be heard from behind the gate. Glowing eyes, either red or white in color, see could be seen from behind brushes and tree canopies. But what stuck with me was a shimmering humanoid shape. The shimmering was otherworldly, the way I always described it to my family and a few friends was that of the predator. My first work firearm was an older Smith & Wesson semi-automatic single-stack pistol that was my dad's when he worked for the Fountain Police Department, but this was the first time I felt defenseless while working. I watched this shimmering silhouette crawl on the asphalt, over to the toll booth. What then appeared to be it stood upright and extended a long, waving arm. This looked like a transition between the physical and incorporeal realms. As I shifted my weight to look closer, as I was awestruck, the glowing reddish eye slowly came back into focus. Then, in a snap, I hear what sounds like an animal climbing up the side of the tollbooth gutter and watch as the shimmer jumps to a tree, no less than 20 feet away. From here, the shimmer jumped again, but this time a broken branch fell from the tree. A loud clashing sound rang for the top center of the gate as the shimmer looked back one last time before going over the gate and disappearing into Seven Falls Park. Bringing us to today, my old co-worker and I ran into each other while at Walmart. We decide to go to the Gunther Toddy's dinner next door. While having a burger and reminiscing about the good old days, he brings up, did you ever see the predator in his active camouflage at Seven Falls? My blood ran cold, and I dropped a shade to just about pale. He then proceeded to tell me about his experiences on his shifts that I've never heard. After leaving the dinner and arriving home, I sat in the driveway for a moment. Contemplating what inhabits Lower Gold Camp Road. I visited family in Mexico. Being Mexican and Native American, I grew up hearing stories about skinwalkers, shapeshifters, nahuales, and other paranormal beings out there. You grow up knowing that these things are out there and are meant to be respected. Let them be. But you are never truly prepared to face such beasts. Hell, I never thought it would be me. I'm not saying I'm the beast. But I do have a family member who happens to be a nahual. The way I found out wasn't the most pleasant thing, and I'm still somewhat in shock. I don't know much about these beings, and I'm slowly starting to do my own research. I just sort of have to get my SHT together and accept what I recently saw. I asked my kokum, grandma, about Nawales, and she explained that they are skinwalkers. Some were born with it due to a family generation curse, others gained the ability through black magic, brujeria, and whatnot. She even brought up the Rougarau of Louisiana and said they too are skinwalkers. But for now, all I want to know is if anyone has ever heard of a Nawal. Nawales? Skinwalkers? And what do you think? This is going to sound extremely far-fetched, but this is exactly what happened to me in the early hours of last night. My boyfriend stays over most weekends, this one wasn't any different. My boyfriend and I smoke weed pretty regularly, 
and we often sneak out to smoke. It was about 1 a.m., and we decided to go get high. We went out to an alleyway just a minute's walk from my house and lit up. After smoking for a bit, we decide to go to the park just down the road. It's a pretty big park, for reference. We walk down to the added skate park, not that it's much of a skate park, more just a few ramps, which from the alley is a good 7 eighths minute walk. By the time we got to the skate park, we were pretty high, and I could have sworn I was seeing shadows out of the corners of my eyes way too regularly for it to be normal, yet I still brushed it off and decided I'm probably just high and getting paranoid. We decided it's probably best to finish our last J and head home. We walked down the short path to get out of the park and back on the road. This road is on the very bottom of a quite steep hill, and it happens to be the hill I live on. As we began to walk up the hill, we both heard a loud, repeated screeching sound coming from further down the hill, but it was way too dark to see anything. My boyfriend was instantly very spooked and began rushing up the hill. However, a few weeks ago, we were walking up the hill, and there was a bunch of foxes making that loud, screechy noise they make. This screech emitted by whatever entity was behind us, though, didn't sound at all like a fox in hindsight. I said to him, probably trying to convince myself more than him, it's probably a fox or something, don't worry, I can't really run, especially all the way up this hill. I'm diagnosed as anorexic and very underweight, I smoke and I don't exercise to not affect my weight, so I'm very unfit, and my heart rate spikes, and I get out of breath a lot faster than a healthy person when running. We walked a bit faster until it sounded like the screeches were getting closer, and I just looked over at my boyfriend and said, duck, just go, and we started running up the hill, absolutely terrified. I need glasses, but I didn't bother putting them on before we left because, originally, we were just going to smoke and then go straight back inside. That and how terrified I was stopped me from looking behind me, but my boyfriend clearly has a fight response to fight or flight because he did look, and he said it looked like some guy in a suit, do keep in mind that through all of this there aren't many street lights on the hill, so it wasn't too easy to see. We tried to get home even quicker, although I could feel my heart beating hard in my chest and could barely breathe, so I had to slow down a bit for a few seconds. Although the screeches were staying at the same volume, if not getting slightly quieter, I thought we had gained some distance. Then my boyfriend said, I see them go now and don't let them see what house we go into, and we sprinted the last bit of the hill, and I fumbled with my keys for good 10 seconds in true horror movie fashion. I could hear the screeches getting closer, and I finally got it and opened the door, not caring to be quiet to sneak back in due to how truly terrified I was, and managed to quickly lock the door behind us. Without saying a word, my boyfriend and I rush up the stairs in my house and sit in my room for a few minutes, just catching our breath. My boyfriend told me he would check out the window in my bathroom that can see down to the front of my house, my house is two stories, so we thought it would be safe to do so, and I sat in my room because I was still understandably freaking out and out of breath. When my boyfriend came back into my bedroom, he had the same look on his face as he had when he first saw the thing. He told me I needed to go look out of the window, but as I mentioned earlier, when I'm in a life-threatening situation, I subconsciously seem to think that what I can't see won't hurt me and refuse to go look. I was too scared to even move anyway. He told me that when he told me to get inside, he thought it was a homeless person either trying to scare us or trying to harm us, but it looked slightly unnatural. He said the creature was twitching and jerking its head and neck as it screeched and was hobbling towards us, but fast and in a way that didn't look like human behavior. When he looked out the window, he said he saw what seemed like a woman with blonde hair right in front of my house, just barely not in my front garden, which is only a few feet long, eating something. Then he got too frightened to keep watching and hurried back to my room, where we stayed for the rest of the night. I have absolutely no idea what this was. I'm not sure if somehow the weed makes things seem worse than they were, but this situation and all the adrenaline seem to have sobbed me up. Again, this actually happened, and I'm still scared of this sounding like something you've heard about. If you have similar stories, please leave a reply, it would really help. I had a very strange walking trail encounter with an invisible, two-legged, very large thing while walking with my dog. Some of the trail sections have wooded areas along the sides of the walking paths. So most of the trail has woods on one side of the path, and the park is on the other side of the trail. The wooded area is not very large. I would guess about 300 feet by half a mile. So I don't consider it a forest. I just call it the woods. The wooded area of the park has three or four small creeks, and I think only one of the creeks has some water. Most of the trees are beautiful and normal tall trees, and some of the trees here and there look like they are dead. There are always people and kids going down there to ride bikes, hang out, and whatever else they do. One day around 4 p.m., I took my female dog, Bertha, for our normal everyday walk. We had just gotten out of the car and began our walk. 
We were probably walking on the trail for about 5 minutes or so when I started feeling weird after a turn. No, I am not scared or afraid. I started to feel happy, and my little pain aches had disappeared. This was very strange because I remember saying to myself inside my head, not out loud. I said. Wow, I feel good. I feel like a little kid. I feel brand new. It was only about 20 seconds of this young and joyful feeling, all of a sudden. Something had let go of a large bush that it was holding on to. The thing sounded like it was intertwined in the bush. Like holding on and trying to hide. At the same time as the noise in the bush, Bertha turned towards the bush and started going after it. I had Bertha on a leash, and she was dragging me, almost taking me into the woods. I had to hold her back because I couldn't see what was making all that noise. It moved through another tall bush and started stepping heavy with loud thumps. I think it fell when it made it out of the bush area. The thing was only about 15 feet away from us on the other side of the bushes and sounded like two very large horses stomping on the ground. I could see the bushes and the grass moving, but I could not see anything. We moved back away from the trail a few feet so I could see a clearing on the other side of the bushes to try to see this thing. I looked right where the sounds of steps were coming from and saw nothing. So I looked down on the ground, and I could see where two feet were stepping on the tall grass. I remember what I said to myself in my head. No way, that is not an invisible monster. After I said that, I heard something I will never forget. The thing started making loud T-Rex stomps. Then I said it out loud. That sounds like T-Rex from the movies, I recall. I could feel the stomps on the ground. Bertha and I were just looking in the woods at this sound. I can feel my eardrums shaking badly, and both eardrums felt like busted speakers. In my head, I said, it's trying to blow my eardrums. The T-Rex stomps lasted about 10 or 15 seconds. Then the sound stopped, it just turned off like a light switch. I have no idea if it jumped into something or vanished. It is strange because, after all that, I still felt happy with no worry or fear at all. I was just very curious. I really wanted to see it. On the way home, I remember thinking. Any other day, I would have been afraid and ran away from it. I heard this thing three or four times in the following days. In another section of wood. I could hear someone heavy walking on leaves just inside the tree line, about 30 feet away in the woods, along with me and Bertha. I would hear it, and I would stop without turning to it. And it would take a step or two, and it would stop. I turned around a few times to see nothing because it wasn't moving. I did this a few times to make sure. I would tell myself, in my head. If a person stays on trail, they have no permission to take you. I think one time I heard his steps in the woods next to me. I said to myself in my head, I think it wants me to make a mistake and go into the woods, towards it. After I said that, I never heard it again. I am sure it can hear what I am thinking. Just a few weeks ago, I saw something very strange related to this thing. Bertha and I were walking in the same part of the trail, only about 100 feet away from my first encounter with the bushes. I stopped to look in the woods at this view. I was standing still, looking past the trees. The area was covered in a few inches of light green grass. I was looking kind of downhill at how the woods go down in and around the creek down there. I said to myself, it looks beautiful, the trees, the color of greens, and the sun's light and shadow. It looks like a postcard, perfect. About two or three seconds after I thought that, while I was just looking down at this area of woods, I saw a big human-shaped blur move between two trees about 80 feet away. I saw it for a split second. It was big. Maybe 10 feet tall. His head was large, his shoulders were broad and muscular, and his left leg was particularly large. I remember his left knee and the big muscle above it, the laterals. I could see the thick, shiny hair on the leg. Yes, this thing looked exactly like the predator from the movie when he was cloaked. It is very weird how my brain was able to capture this image. My memory surprised me. His shoulders, his head, and the side of his back were reflecting the woods between him and me. It looked like a male, not a female. I was surprised, just like him. In my opinion, I think he took off running because he thought I was sensing that he was in the area. But I had no idea he was there. I think he knows Bertha, he can't pick up on him if he hides a little farther away from the trail. I am very cautious when we go walking near the woods now. I also tell people where I am going and carry a few extra things hidden on me. I have no idea why this thing got so close to me or what its intentions were. And I also don't know why it ran away from me those times. Was there something or someone behind me that startled me? These occurrences were a very incredible time of my life. It changed me in a good way. I often think, I don't know, but maybe that's why dogs are on this planet. To help us pick up on these invisible things when they get too close. Always be happy and do the things you love doing in your life. Have no worries, and certainly no fear.
I hope my story helps people to be alert and careful out there in this world. So pretty much, this was my first encounter with a paranormal entity, and I'm just looking for answers. I live in the UK, and I have a caravan in Northumberland. We used to like to go on walks at night, but there was this one time we were going on a walk. Forgot to mention we had a torch that was expensive and really, really good so we could see everything, we got to walking on the top road, and we walked for a few minutes to where there is this train electric box. We pointed the light at the tracks, and their standing was what I can make out to be a 7-8 foot tall pink figure standing staring at us for about a minute, then ran off on all fours, but still to this day I've never gone back at night or have any idea what it is. Can anyone help? My boyfriend is clairvoyant and tells me he's seen an entity in my father's house in my old bedroom that he is now residing in for the time being. He describes this thing as coming off as very strange compared to what he's used to seeing. He can't tell if it's human, a demon, a shadow person, or some type of otherworldly spirit. To him, it feels malicious. He says he feels greed and despair when he looks at it. He usually only sees it in my old bedroom when he wakes up in the afternoon. It appears as a black smoke or fog that covers one corner of the room, smiling with a wide, strange smile and eyes that are teardrop shaped and dragged down. Growing up in that room, I honestly don't know what to think of it. I always knew something was off and present in the house, but I never encountered anything strange happening other than feeling watched all the time. Anyway, I asked my boyfriend to draw a photo of what he sees in this entity as best he could. If someone could please give me some advice as to what we are dealing with so I know what route to go about this, I would gladly appreciate it. I'm worried for his well-being as well as that of my father. This event happened to me in the late summer of 2011. At that time in my life, I was living in a small town in northwest Washington called Bow slash Edison, a rural community south of Bellingham and north of Burlington slash Cedro Woolley that was just off the Chuckanut Drive Highway and is easily one of the most beautiful spots to visit. I had recently completed a year at trade school, attended the Job Corps program in Cedro Woolley, and had just gotten my first job at the Skagit Valley Casino and Resort. Sadly, I didn't have much money, only enough to cover rent for a room in an old farmhouse just off Chuckanut. This was lucky for me, as it was only a few miles from the casino, which was just off Interstate 5, and was a more than feasible ride on the hand-down bike I had procured shortly before graduating from Job Corps. When I started, I was a dishwasher, and I worked the swing-slash-night shift. Getting to work was a bit of a pain, the ride was mostly uphill and along the windy Bow Hill Road, but over time it became manageable. I had just moved into the farmhouse and was starting my second week when I first came to regret taking the night shift. Sadly, at this time I only had a cheap gas station flashlight to illuminate my ride home, which at night was made even darker since Bow Hill Road cut through dense forested areas and had several twists and bends, making the ride harrowing in some instances. My first ride home, at around 3 in the morning, had not gone well. Within minutes of departure, I had been attacked by an animal that darted out of the underbrush and tried biting at my right leg. I didn't see what precisely lunged out at me, though in hindsight I'm certain it was likely a coyote or stray dog. Fortunately, it didn't bite me directly, I got a mouthful of gene before I managed to kick the beast off and fly down the hillside for home. Needless to say, my first ride in the dark alone, with barely any light, made me very apprehensive about future night rides. The next few days found me very on edge when riding home, fearful of another animal attack. Since I wasn't familiar at that time with what the typical wildlife of the area consisted of, I was fearful of encountering Washington's larger and more aggressive predators, primarily black bears drawn to the sloughs during low tide, blackberry bushes, and cougars. Thankfully, those nights were uneventful and overall pleasant, save for one particularly rainy night, which made visibility worse. Before I continue, I feel I need to explain one aspect. Heading towards the casino along Bow Hill Road, just off Chuckanut, there's a small cattle farm that raises cows for artisanal cheese making, which, if you're ever in that area, picks some up. It's amazing. Bow Hill Road at this point twists in a weird way, snaking its way through two oddly placed plots of land, with both sides lined with thick wild brush and a small copse of trees on one side, the other with the fencing and cattle enclosure. As I was riding home on a very pleasant and bright night, a rarity in the typically overcast region, my ride home was going smoothly. I'd estimate it was roughly 2 a.m. when I left work, and since most of the ride home was just a pleasant coast down to the highway, my attention was mainly on the bends in the road and making sure not to drift too close to the uneven and grave shoulders. I had just made it down the hill and was making my way along the snaking portion, as mentioned before, which took me between the cattle farm and abandoned plot, maybe less than half a mile from home, when I saw something that, to this day, I can't say for certain what it was. 
Just as I was making the first bend, less than 50 feet ahead, I saw a large, dark brown or black furred figure stride across the two-lane road and down into the ditch that separated the road from the cattle fence. My blood had gone cold. Just in the faint and shitty beam of my cheap flashlight, I could only make out a large torso, seen partially in profile and exposing what I can only assume was its back. I didn't see details such as the head, arms, or legs, only that the figure that moved in front of me looked roughly 8 feet tall and half that wide at what I can only assume are its shoulders. In that instant, I shouted, certain in that moment that my worst fear of a bear attack had happened and that all my instincts told me to pedal as hard and fast as I could. Between the shock of this figure suddenly appearing and moving in front of me and the fear of being mauled, I'm thankful I had the good sense to shout. In case you aren't aware, bears, black bears in particular, are easily spooked and tend to flee from humans if they make a loud noise, unless, of course, their mother bears with young nearby. Regardless, I Lance Armstronged all the way home, grateful for the street lights on the highway, and managed to get home, though I ran as if I were being chased once I got off my bike and safely into the old farmhouse. I managed to get to my room, lock the door, and sit on my bed, holding myself and practically hyperventilating from both exertion and fear. Now I'm sure some of you will ask, did you see a Bigfoot or Sasquatch? I don't know. I truly cannot say. I can tell you, for certain, what it wasn't. It wasn't a bear. Bears typically, if they stand, don't walk upright, and certainly not as fast as whatever it is I saw was. Additionally, bipedal bears walk very awkwardly, more like a waddle than something striding. It wasn't, as far as I can recall, a vagrant. While it is true that the area did see some homeless traffic of people making their way north towards Bellingham, most of the time they traveled during the day, almost always with carts, bags, or something. The chances that what I saw was a very tall homeless man wearing a full fur jacket in August, which, even that late at night, wasn't cold at all, were highly unlikely. So what was it? I can say that, though I do believe in the existence of Sasquatch, I've never been able to say definitively what it was I did see, only that it was large, moved fast, and made me feel very helpless and more anxious for the weeks to come until I managed to transfer to the morning shift. Whatever it was that I saw, I never experienced anything like that again, at least when it came to encountering some unknown, large, furred creature walking across the road at 2 in the morning. Was it a bear? Was it a Sasquatch? Was it the tallest hobo with the most unusual fashion sense? I have no idea. Even to this day, I still wonder what I saw and if I was in any real danger. After I had shouted and booked it as fast as I could, the only sound I heard behind me was a sudden rustling of the brush and a deep grunt, although in my adrenaline fueled flight, it was possible those sounds could have been caused by a cow near the fence. But still, it doesn't explain whatever it was I saw that night. So this happened a couple months ago, on December 20th, 2020. It all started when me and four friends decided to go out, all 18 year old males. We were going out a lot around that time because one of us was leaving the country for school, and everything was normal. We went to a restaurant, got some food, and then we had to drop one of our friends home, whom we will call friend A after we drop that friend home, we decided to head downtown, and it was pretty dark at this time. The quickest way to get to downtown from all houses was this long, dark road with no street lights. We drove on that millions of times before, it wasn't in a sketchy neighborhood either, it just never had any lights. Anyway, while we are driving down this road, I see a black round figure in the middle of the road, but as we got closer, I saw that it had pink mole-like feet, and the person, friend B, driving the car swerves, trying to avoid it. I look back, and I see whatever it was flying up in the air and started floating like a plastic bag, but then it landed and started crawling with its pink feet like nothing had happened. I started freaking out, asking if I was the only one who had it, and I wasn't. Friend B said he saw something that looked like a plastic bag in the road, but then he saw the feet, and to him, it looked like a super chubby dog, which is why he swerved out of the way. Friend C said he didn't see anything in the road, but he saw something fly up behind the car. But my friend didn't see anything at all. Being dumb teens, we started making jokes about it being a demon or something, but you could still tell everyone was uneasy, and that was it. We went downtown, hung out, talked, and even drove on that road back home, even though we were a little paranoid. But that same night, when I went to sleep, I woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't move. I'm a bit of a skeptic, so I immediately thought it was just sleep paralysis. I've had it before, no big deal. I just focused really hard on moving my wrist, and I snapped out of it. I've had sleep paralysis many times before, and that method always worked, so I went back to sleep and woke up again, and I had sleep paralysis again, but this time was different. I felt a hand on my wrist, and I couldn't bend it, 
so it felt like I could move for hours, but eventually I snapped out of it again. I still waste time thinking too much of it because I know sleep paralysis can make you imagine things, so I checked my phone, and it was 3 o'clock. I thought to myself the devil's hour and went back to sleep, and 10 seconds after I laid down, I started to feel super comfortable, it felt like I was sleeping on the world's best bed. Then I started to feel something wrap around my body, slowly starting from my legs, and I clearly remember thinking, I'm too comfortable to move out of this position, and whatever it is, it feels kind of nice. But when it reached my waist, it moved super fast and wrapped around my whole body, and I had a feeling of instant dread. I opened my eyes, and I saw my mattress flip into my face and turn me onto my back. Then I felt it, it felt like hands were all over my body, and I could tell where each individual one was, and I was scared. I instinctively wanted to move my wrist, and I could move it freely, but I was still paralyzed, and I realized I could feel a hand right below my wrist, which is probably why I could move it. That's when I realized it wasn't normal sleep paralysis. I could also make noise, not talk, but only muffled noises. Then I see my door open, and a black figure walks in and starts at me. I feel like I'm going to die, but it never touches me. I just stare, and then I see a bunch of shadows get sucked out of my room. I check the time, and it moved from 3.33 to 3.34. I didn't go back to sleep after that because I was scared. The time he almost got me, it happened to me a few months ago. I was half asleep, trying to take a nap, I was sleeping on my back. That's when I heard my father's voice. The voice came from my right. My father has a lovely voice. I was happy to hear it. He asked me something really trivial, and I was going to turn to my right side to answer him. I remembered something, my dad had a lovely voice. He passed away two years ago. I cannot describe the panic I had at this point. I went from being half asleep to fully awake, and I started noticing things. First of all, where the hell am I? I wasn't in my room anymore, my room was really sunny as it happened in the afternoon, and the room was covered with some really black wood. It looked dirty as hell. Second of all, who or what is standing to my right? I would have given everything to see my dad again, and he knew it. As tempting as it was, I did not look, and my whole body felt that something was wrong. As I was rolling to the left, trying to avoid eye contact with whatever was here, my body seemed to weigh a ton, it was like I was half paralyzed. When I finally managed to turn to my left, I was in my room again. I was sweating, and my body was half numb for a moment. I was exhausted and shivering, but I was free. This is a real story. It was just past 3 in the morning, and I woke up to my phone buzzing. It was my best friend calling. She is quite an anxious person, she doesn't like to do things alone, so I picked her up. I had work at 6 the next morning, but I gathered it would be important. When I picked up, she told me that my boyfriend, a 22-year-old male, had been trying to call me, but I hadn't woken up. He then called her and asked her if she would be able to pick him up. He was out at a friend's pub, having drinks with the boys, but decided he wanted to go home. He and his friend, a 21-year-old male, started walking back. We are in the UK, so the drive is only 10 minutes, but because it's country roads, the walk would be about an hour and a half, especially if you're drunk. She asked me to go with her to collect them, so I reluctantly agreed because of the circumstances. On the way there, my best friend was talking, but in my head, it was muffled because I was trying not to fall asleep in the car. Her car came to a stop, so I looked up but realized we were not yet at our destination. I was confused, so I asked, why have we stopped? To which she responded, I just told you. There's kittens in the hedge. This seemed odd to me, but I looked over and saw some little ears. Because it was so late at night or early in the morning, there were no other cars around, so I also got out to look. When we reached the hedge, there was nothing in there but branches cracking, so we got back into the car, thinking we were just a bit tired and delusional. We carried on driving down the road. Eventually, we reached the boys. They were on a country road about a mile away from the pub at this point. My best friend has a three-door car, so we both got out to let the boys get into the back seats. Once in the car, the boys were breathless. We were confused, but we gathered it was just because they'd been walking for probably about an hour, given they'd walked a mile. After catching their breath, they told us to drive and be quick. Sophie, being Sophie, panicked, so she spanked her car around and floored it. At first, I suspected a farmer with a gun, as we were next to a lot of fields and farmland. What they proceeded to tell us was far more sinister. We asked them what was wrong, and they both started scrambling to tell us their version of events. Eventually, they calmed down a little to be able to actually explain. They said they had been walking along and heard something in the bushes. They stopped, trying to figure out if they were being paranoid or if this was actually happening. Silence. They carried on, 
and the same thing happened, but instead of silence this time, they saw a tall shadow figure, taller than a human could ever stand. They said they froze in fear, but the adrenaline started moving their legs, the figure started to inch closer, so they just ran and did not look back. We all got home safely without seeing the figure again, but part of me believed that those kittens were a lure to try and get us to go into the hedges. We would have been the next victims after the boys, and I'm convinced that this thing was probably a skinwalker. We have not had an experience like this since, and I hope we don't again.